Hi, this is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to basically show you um, one of the albums that I've looped the most in my life. And since starting up, starting to load videos where I'm showing you some of my collection, the little things that I have, some of the things that I love, and just, you know, maybe plants, comic books, math books, whatever they are, right? Um, people have been asking me to show you guys my record collection my album collection and i only have a small collection what you see here basically these two rows here is what we have a third of this is mine a third of it is my partner's and approximately from here on down we sort of ended up picking up this summer um, just from people moving they're just giving away albums so we grabbed this much as well and um, you know my collection is small and that's our family collection a handful came with me or stay have have stayed with me throughout all our moves right up to this point and i only had a small collection to begin with mainly i listened to cassette tapes because cassette tapes were um more mobile right you could take them places you could take them to your friend's place and listen to them throw in a backpack or your pocket or whatever it was right but i do want to show you three of the albums actually one of them is a triple album <laughs> so there's five albums here that i've listened to them out of the albums that have stayed with me these ones i've listened to a lot and i've listened to cds versions of these and tape versions of these and downloaded versions of these online versions of these and stuff like this and these are all five albums i guess are from rush and the one that i've listened to the most by a long shot from rush um moving pictures um, is one of them right but 2112 is the one that i've listened to the most right 2112 is is absolutely magnificent right this album is let me take a look at that right absolutely phenomenal i bought these brand new and this is how scuffed up it is now right like <laughs> like seriously i used to take you know listen to the music and read the lyrics as the music played you know i would put on headphones i'd move the speakers lay down and have the speakers and you know just pounding just pounding the music right just cranking it and um rush is a funny thing for me because my first love of music was um was metal and electronic right and here are the other two actually let me show you these ones we were getting into this but permanent waves right fantastic album and i bought uh, you know i bought these brand new and this is sort of a compilation of the first three Rush albums. Okay. Rush, Fly By Night, and Caris of Steel, right? And after the Caris of Steel, Rush put out 2112. I believe so anyway. I hope that's the order. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I wrote it down, but I believe that's the order of albums that they came out. And then there was Hemispheres and um, something else, and then moving, um, moving Pictures, and then something 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 right uh so basically i've started listening to rush in the early 1980s and i stayed with rush all the way to roll the bones and i actually went to the roll the bones concert right but I've, out of all the rush albums 2112 is the one that i've looped the most and out of all the albums that i've listened to in my life 2112 is probably in the top three albums that i've looped the most uh and I go back to it on a regular basis. And the way I got introduced to Rush, uh, like I said, is sort of a, a weird story because I've, you know, I was into metal and electronic when I first started listening to music buying. My first two cassette tapes that I ever bought were um, Black Sabbath and Tomita. Okay, and I was like, I don't know how old I was. I was probably like eight years old, right? I really didn't understand Black Sabbath. I loved the cover and. The music seemed weird compared to everything I listened to because the place I used to go by was uh, uh, when I was a kid, I guess it was seven or eight years old, eight years old or nine years old. Um, you know, it wasn't in Canada, it was in Iran. In Iran, what you did at that time, in the late 70s, I guess, you went to cassette stores and everything you bought was basically pirated. I guess the stores or the company would buy the original cassette tapes and they would, would copy them onto recording uh tapes that were recorded right for use for recording and those are the cassettes that you bought right and i actually still have those two 
that I've bought, my first two cassette tapes, right? And, you know, after Black Sabbath, I got into a whole bunch of other metal, like everything, right? I, you know, I went to a whole bunch of concerts in the early 1980s, went to Iron Maiden's Number the Beast, went to, I don't know if you call it Death Leopard Metal, but at the time it was Glam Metal, one of the first ones, or Glam Rock, and um, a whole bunch of other bands that came out in the 1980s, but I never initially got onto Rush, okay? And I remember the conversation that got me listening to Rush. And that conversation was with a friend of mine because in the, in the 80s, I, was, uh, I started playing drums. We had a little garage band. I was playing drums. And I had, you know, once you start playing music, you sort of interact with other musicians. I don't know if I would call, consider myself a musician at the time. I was playing drums. I learned a couple of songs from U2. I learned a couple of songs from... Um, the police wrapped around your fingers and U2's uh, Sunday Bloody Sunday and whatnot, right? So I was l- learning some other songs from some from Van Halen and stuff like this, just doing the circuit and learning what a lot of people listen to, right? The police initially was, there weren't too many people listening to it in my group, but we sort of picked it up, right? And uh, Rush I never really got into until... I got into a conversation with a friend of mine that was a bassist. I remember this conversation. We're sort of driving and we're talking music as we did a lot, right, uh, back then. And um, my friend mentioned Rush and I sort of went, you know, man, you know, I love, I love the instrumentals of Rush, but at the time I really couldn't stand Geddy Lee's voice. And that's something I've heard, criticism I've heard from a lot of people that, the, the voice of Geddy Lee really turns people off, right? And I was, in the, I was the same way, okay? And when we were talking, I sort of mentioned this, that, you know, Geddy Lee's voice is really high, it really gets annoying, stuff like this. And, you know, I mentioned that I love the instrumental stuff, and I was at the beginning stages of learning how to drum. And um, I think I already learned how to play Sunday Bloody Sunday and wrapped around your, you wrapped around your fingers. Uh, and I really loved Neil Peart's drumming, right? Um, but I hadn't learned how to play it yet, right? And my friend, you know, just, I remember, he just said, look, Chicho, right? At the time, I wasn't going by Chicho, but he basically, basically turned to me while we were driving and said, look, Chicho, just listen to them, right? Really, just go past your this taste of the voice, right? And he really meant it, and I had respect for him for, you know, I've seen him play, and he was a good bassist, right? So I said, okay, no worries. I'll listen to them, right? So I went out and bought 2112, and I bought, because for me, I'm sort of, uh, if I'm gonna delve into something, I, I like going from the beginning, right? Um, that's what I've done with some of the music that have, have, has been a part of my life forever and it will be, right? Maybe System of a Down or Nina Simone or Mujabas or whatever it is, right? So I went out and bought these two albums. Okay, 2112 and I, you know, I was in high school, <laughs> didn't have too much money. So I bought Rush Archives, right? And this was, uh, I bought the albums, not the tapes because this was sort of at the beginning stages of me getting into listening to records. We had a record player and the sound of records uh, blows away anything else you can listen to, right? Maybe MP3s, waves, tapes, eight tracks, whatever it is, right? There's nothing like putting on a record. Like it's heavy, right? So, you know, I started off with uh, you know, I had the cassette tapes for moving pictures, and I would listen to that Tom Sawyer and whatnot. And, uh, or, you know what, I think I, I hadn't gone into Tom Sawyer yet or moving pictures. No, I must have been listening to moving pictures. Chronology of order of these things is a little hazy, right, from that period. But basically, I listened to these three albums, right? Rush, Fly By Night, Caress, Caress of Steel, I can't even pronounce it. Caris of Steel, right? 
and 2112. And I knew about 2112 and I listened to a little bit of 2112. But again, Getty Lee's voice sort of turned me off. And what I did was do exactly what my friend recommended. I looped them. Okay, I put on headphones and looped it. I turned the speakers towards each other, laid in the middle, put my head between them, and I looped it. I cranked it. Right. I sort of programmed myself to get over, right, or deprogram myself to get over Getty Lee's voice. And slowly, uh, I started really liking his voice. And I started hearing the words. The drumming I loved, the bass I loved. I didn't know too much about um, guitar, but talking to my friends that were guitarists at the time, I knew a lot of people that played a lot of, some music anyway. Um, and a lot of them said Alex, Alex Lifeson, he's an amazing guitarist, right? So quickly I found out that all three of them were, you know, masters of their trade, right? Rush is basically a uh, musician's uh, musician, right? Uh, musicians listen to Rush. And once I found out, I kept on looping, I kept on looping, and it started to blow me away, right? And I went beyond just how intricate the, the instrumentals were. Once the words, once I got over the voice of Getty Lee and I started to love it and I really began to appreciate how powerful it was and how insanely uh, beautiful it was synced with the instrumentals right when I started understanding the lyrics that's when Rush really uh, just blew me away right um, because the lyrics that mainly Neil Peart with Getty Lee uh, I believe Alex has written a little bit too contributed a little bit too but the lyrics have meaning they're not random and it's very much like a uh, system of a down where their whole repertoire their whole library is just basically one message right and the reason that you know i decided to make this video is to show you basically you know one of the bands that i've looped the most one of the albums that i have looped the most right uh in my life and one of the albums and 2112 is an album that i go back to I don't I don't have my record player set up right now uh, we have two three record players and we haven't set it up yet right but I do listen to 2112 on a regular basis and right now it's basically mp3s waves but we're pretty close to now that we got our record set up we're pretty close to setting up our record player as well and the first album I'm gonna throw on there is this right and I'm gonna crank the living daylights out of this right and 2112 this album is literally you know i can't think of any other album i've listened to i've looped nina simone up the yin yang i've looped system of a down up the yin yang i've looped a lot of hip-hop dead prez immortal technique jedi mind tricks um tupac and biggie 100 percent right spm south park mexican as far as hip-hop is concerned i've looped a lot of that tomita nucha Baz, i've looped a lot but if it go, you know, comes down to picking the single album that I've looped the most is 2112. Okay. So the reason I'm sort of sharing this with you, um, aside from letting you know, because people have been asking me to show you my record collection, and these are three of them, I guess, or four, five of them, five albums that I have. And at some point we'll go through these. But the reason that I'm sort of um sharing this with you is because i'm in the process of uh, putting together a video uh you know doing my research and going through my notes this is sort of notes that i've taken over the years uh, with uh with my notebook to create the math content that i've created all the content i've created one of the videos i'm 
putting together right now is, as I mentioned in a previous video, um, a few videos ago, I'm going to start creating more content on a playlist called Advice and uh, Education and link that up with my business model and some of the other stuff that we're, we're doing on this channel, right? So I was doing, uh, putting together that video, the content for that video for, uh, for some of the advice that I have uh, for those that are interested, if you're interested in what I've learned so far, some of the things that I've learned from so far living this life. And I've shared some of that information with you guys in all of my videos. A lot of my videos contain a lot of advice, but I'm gonna, you know, in the process of putting a long video together for that. And one bit of advice I, you know, wanted to grab from 2112, okay? And this is one of the reasons 2112 is, uh, one of the albums that I go back to the most because for me it's one of the most relevant it's it has a science fiction theme to it and I found out uh, through a documentary and if you don't know Rush there's two documentaries I highly recommend watching um, one of them is uh, the 2010 documentary called Rush Beyond the Lighted Stage okay it's done by Sam Dunn and Sam Dunn is a I think he was doing his master's in anthropology or PhD in anthropology, and he decided he was a metal fan, and he's from Vancouver, uh, where I'm from, right? He was a metal fan, and he decided to make um, metal documentaries, global metal, and I think metal was the first one, and then he made this one in 2010, Rush Beyond the Lightest Stage, and it's fantastic, really. Have a look through that documentary if you don't know what Rush is about. And then there's another documentary that came out in 2016, which is Rush um, Time Stand Still, okay? And I just watched this last night. I just found out about it. Um, so I saw 2010, Rush Beyond the Line Stage, I think in 2010, okay? And I loved it. It was just, it, it was amazing, right? And uh, this last one that I watched last night, the 2016 one, it was a total tearjerker. Oh my God, right? If you're a Rush fan, if you haven't seen that one, definitely watch it. If you want to understand what Rush is about, just take two hours, um, three hours of your life, two and a half hours of your life, and watch these two documentaries and have an appreciation for one of the, greatest bands that have ever existed rock bands and I from what I understand they're called they're considered to be progressive metal and in my opinion they sort of rush uh, you know I'm, I don't know my history of math core metal but as far as I'm concerned uh, I got introduced to math core through Dillinger escape plan I've looped a lot of Dillinger as well but uh, for the way I see it right now I'll look at the history at some point as well, but the way I see it right now, Mathcore was a direct, pro, you know, continuation of the intricacy of what Rush was doing, right? Because their music was absolutely amazing, right? Like one of the things that I saw in the documentary in the 2010 one, Rush Beyond Lie Stage, um, one, like for me, being a drummer, um, one of the songs that I tried to learn how to play was... Um, Tom Sawyer, right? After learning some U2 songs, Police, Stuart Copeland, Stuart Copeland, amazing. And if you really like Stuart Copeland, there's one band you should listen to. They put out one album. It was uh, um, Oysterhead, okay? It was Stuart Copeland. Um, the bassist was uh, Primus, um, the guy from Primus. And uh, the guitarist was, uh, the guitarist from, uh, fish i believe and I, I was lucky enough to catch them on a tour um they only did one tour one round they put out one album and it was amazing watching Stuart copeland drum right so i learned a little bit of Stuart copeland when i was learning how to drum and i tried my hands with tom sawyer and i couldn't you know the the drum solo part of tom sawyer i couldn't get i couldn't master right and that was sort of me uh, appreciating that uh, I had peaked in my drum drumming abilities because I used to practice a lot. It wasn't I wasn't a natural 
right? I actually learned drumming by learning how to read drum notes. I, I had to have the notes to be able to do it, right? And it was later on that I found out Tom Sawyer was not nothing compared to um, the 1978 album that Rush put out. I can't even pronounce this. La, Ville, La Villa Strangiato, right? The drumming for that is supposed to be mind-boggling. And I, you know, understood how intricate that song was when I watched the documentary, the 2010 documentary, Beyond the Lightest Stage, where they showed that even Rush, Stuart Copeland, Getty Lee, Alex Lifeston, not Stuart Copeland, sorry, Neil Peart, Getty Lee, and Alex Lifeston couldn't even record La Villa Stratigianto in one take. Right, and then the alternate name for that is an exercise in indulgence. Right, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, now after realizing that the, you know I wouldn't be a master drummer, um, I sort of phased out my drumming. I still kept my drum set with me for. I just got rid of it recently, in the last eight years, right? My drum set stayed with me for about 25 years. And if you're into drumming, the drum set I had was a Vancouver-based drum company, uh, Milestone Drums. They made fiberglass drums, right? I bought them at an amazing price, and they stayed with me for a very, very long time, right? But Rush is something that, you know, even when I stopped playing drums, even when I stopped, uh, because I went through phases where I would listen to metal and won't listen to metal. Uh, yeah, I went through a huge hip hop phase, electronic phase, and whatnot phase. 2112 was an album that I always came back to, right? So when I was putting together, you know, the information for this video that I'm going to put together uh, regarding some advice that I can share, that I would love to share, right? Uh, there's one bit of advice that I wanted to share from Rush because all their albums, they're sharing advice. They're telling us their experiences. They're telling us stories. They're, they're motivating us to be the best that we can be, right? Seriously, Rush is absolutely brilliant, right? So I'm going to tell you what that, little bit of advice is that I'm going to try to incorporate in, in one of the videos coming up, maybe in the next video, I'm not absolutely sure. And it's the lyrics from one of the songs from 2112, right? And again, really, if you haven't listened to 2112, loop this thing. Front and back, side A and side B. I've listened to both sides just as many times, okay? And the lyrics, the advice that I wanted to share that Rush shared with us, the bit of motivation of how to, how to live your life, right? How to best live your life is from the song. Okay, let me put on my glasses here. Okay. It's from the song, Something for Nothing, right? And it's the last song on this album, 2112, and it's from Side B. And this is uh, something that uh, I shared back in 2009 on my blog when I was doing a fair bit of writing. And I like writing reviews, and I wanted to write a review of 2112, okay, uh, of a Russian general, but 2112 specifically. Right, sort of along the same lines of a review that I've written for System of a Down back in 2006. After I went to their uh, hypnotized tour, I, uh, I, like, I like, I, I, before watching System of a Down live, I would have said I loved System of a Down, but that wouldn't be true because I really didn't understand System of a Down until going to one of their live shows, right? So after going to the live show, I loved System of a Down. And I uh, wrote a little review of Hypnotized back in 2006. Um, and, I, and I loved the way that review came out. Okay, I spent a lot of time on that, 
on that piece. It was actually it was uh, a lot of people that like System of Down really like that review as well because the official fan website that existed took that review and they posted it along uh, in the same place as reviews with Rolling Stone and some of the other uh, music magazines, right? And mine was right there as well, System of Down, so a little review of that, right? So I wanted to do the same thing for 2112, the album that I've probably looked the most in my life, right? So what I ended up doing for 2112, I, I couldn't find each track separately and I wanted to break this thing down. So what I did was take all the tracks and I uploaded them to YouTube and Daily Motion and I hit some copyright issues there and the videos were being removed and stuff like this. So I couldn't write the review that I wanted to, but I did write a post about this, right? Sort of paying tribute to Rush. And what I want to do is read you two of the paragraphs and I'll link, uh, you know, uh, to the archive where this uh, this article is on my previous site from 2009 and I'll probably uh, include this in my present blog as well the links I hyperlink some stuff as well because it's very political and it covers a lot of stuff uh, those links a lot of them won't be active because a lot of things have been filtered censored offline but basically uh, this is the post I sort of ended up putting together and I called it this because the the videos was loading up they were being removed from online right so um, I ended up calling the post the music industry almost kills a tribute to one of the greatest albums in history of rock and roll 2012 by Rush right that's what I called my post in 2009 when I wrote it and uh, let me read you two paragraphs. Actually, let me read you the first three paragraphs of this, okay? I'll skip the rest and then I'm gonna read you one more paragraph at the end. And that's basically the advice that I'm gonna to try to incorporate into an advice video that I'm gonna to try to make, right? Going off on a lot of tangents here, but it's very much to the spirit of Rush because they layer, they layer, they layer. Uh, so here's the first three paragraphs of the post and I'll supply the link to the description of this video as well let me give you some background information that's the title right the secondary title quote or quoting myself I guess I'm a rush fan I have been since the early 1980s I have the LPs from the first four albums and CDs of everything up to 1991 Nine, up to up to their 1991 album roll the bones i've also had the pleasure of seeing them li perform live in toronto their hometown what a show it was their 1976 album 2112 that got me hooked most music aficionados would agree that it's a masterpiece one of the greatest artistic achievements of all time it's not only a perfect collaboration between three of the greatest musicians the world has ever produced. It's a message and its message is timeless, which is why for the last week I have been looping this album, trying to put together a tribute piece that would do it justice. I was going to call the post, Come, Experience 2112 by Rush, a tribute to one of the greatest experiences in the history of rock and roll. And then I go into why this post that I'm making is not titled that. And the reason I wasn't titled that was because, um, you know, YouTube and Daily Motion, I got zapped with copyright infringements, and YouTube removed some of the videos that I uploaded, and Daily Motion removed some of the videos that I uploaded. So I didn't end up writing that tribute piece, but this was sort of my tribute piece, right? And this video is sort of my tribute piece to Rush as well, right? And those videos being removed by YouTube, by Universal Music Group, because they own the rights. I don't know if Rush has gotten back the rights to their music or they already had them or whatnot. Through the documentaries, I found out that 2112, the do or die album for them, because Caressa Steel was a concept album that 
didn't sell very well and the studio they had signed with basically told them your next album you know if it doesn't sell very much they're gonna drop rush right so they had to make the decision to make something that could be popular or make something that they loved and if it was a hit they continue producing music and if it wasn't that would be that right and 2112 did well did well right rightfully so right but 2112 let me read you one more paragraph right let's set the stage that's sort of the second part of this post the story of, of 2112 is as follows and this is one paragraph right if you don't know this album this is sort of the general gist of 2112 the first part of it anyway side a in a dystopian society where every single facet of every life is regulated and directed by an oligarchy a humble individual discovers something beautiful that was long ago for forbidden forgotten and lost a guitar right and it goes through how this person finds the guitar and tells a story and it's based on a book or a short story and I'll, in that post i sort of took the lyrics and took the story and shared that information right and again i highly recommend if you haven't listened to this album loop it really 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 you'd be amazed at how many people i've met that i tell them i'm a rush fan and they're like i hate rush and i'm like hate rush hate what a powerful word to use to hate three of the greatest musicians the music industry has ever seen right so again listen to this right but the lyrics i wanted to share that i'm going to try to incorporate in that advice video are from are from the last song okay and this is the way i incorporated those lyrics into the paragraph of the post that i made okay and this is basically uh you know last paragraph last two paragraphs before the post ends and kicks into the lyrics of 2112 and the story of 2112 right so here is uh that paragraph so i'll read this sentence as an intro to this okay below you will find the story of 2112 side a from the album by the same name i was also going to write an intro to side b what a rush i found it to be to hop on a train to bangkok for the first time where i could enter a world of imagination and explore my dreams creation how the music reminded me that my goals are more than just a thought that i can't get something for nothing that freedom is not for free and that i won't get wise when the sleep's still in my eyes no matter what my dreams might be okay. after all what i own is my own kingdom what i do is my own glory what i love is my own power and how i live is my own story without further ado 2112 by rush and i would recommend going through this sooner rather than later because the odds are these videos will not be up for much longer and that was in reply linking back to the videos being removed through censorship which loops back to the story of 2112 with an oligarchy controlling everything right consolidation of power centralization of power and whatnot right amazing 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 and I have the lyrics I printed off the lyrics for something for nothing as well but uh, we'll save that for the next video uh, on the advice and try to incorporate that those words that bit of advice and how we should live our lives uh, from rush from 2112 and uh, I'll let you experience 2112 yourself if you're up for it. Okay. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.